We will continue off on the tour of Heroes, uh, our first Angular application. In the previous videos we just set up the project and we went for the introduction. Now we'll be uh, making the component. Um, so the first thing we want to do is use the Angular CLI to generate the component uh, Heroes. Uh, so I'm going to open up another terminal and I will keep this one running and we can type in ng generate component and what this will do is it will create the component heroes in source in application uh, I want to put my components in a components uh, folder to give it a little bit more structure so we can type in components here slash heroes and we could also do NGGC for a shortcut, but it's good to write it explicitly here for the first time using the CLI. And we can see that inside app, inside source, we've created this components folder. And inside that folder, we have a blank CSS file, uh, a HTML file where it just says the name of it plus works. We've got a spec file which we don't need to, and that's just for testing and then we've got the uh, component, uh, the TypeScript file. So we'll take a look at uh, the Angular documentation and it sort of just explains what this component is. Um, so the component has this at component uh, decorator function and it specifies metadata so there's a selector and that's essentially like the open square brackets uh, sort of like if you had a paragraph it's open square brackets p close square brackets um, and in angular we can use the selector uh, like open square Bracket is app dash heroes and it just takes the name of the component again and it prefixes it with app uh, and that's how we can call it the component from the main area that we're calling it from. Uh, we've also it's associated with the HTML file and the CSS files which were created alongside it. Um, we always import the component uh, for a component. And there is this uh, ng on init, which is a lifecycle life cycle hook, and it's called shortly after creating the component. And I just did a like a Google search: what's the difference between constructor and ng on init? And it appears that the ng on init uh, is the lifecycle hook that runs after the constructor. And Angular. This is where you should initialize all your initial data and you shouldn't actually use the constructor uh, to initialize uh, for the initialization logic because uh, the constructor is used by Angular in what's known as dependency injection. So when we need extra functionality into the component, uh, such as like a user service, if you're logged in, um, you want to inject that service into the application globally across different components perhaps to access a uh, different state. Uh, we reserve the constructor for uh, dependency injection. Thus we use ng on init and to use ng on init we need to implement ng on init with our class and that gets done by default so all this gets written for us which is quite nice. Uh, another thing to note is we are Angular is written in TypeScript files. Well with TypeScript so you know it has which is essentially just JavaScript with types. Um, so it's sort of like a mashup between JavaScript and object oriented programming like Java or something like that. And um, just makes it a little more robust and reliable, less prone to errors and nice structure for things. Um, okay, 
So, okay, so properties. Okay, so we add a property. Uh, so we add this hero property to our component. And we can go ahead and we can do that here. Hero equals windstorm. And open the heroes component HTML. And we can just go ahead and we can um, use that string interpolation to display the property uh, from the TypeScript. So, what was it? So, we'll save this and we'll type in hero. Hero, we'll save this. So we've made a component, but it's not uh, it's not being picked up by the application. So if you look at the two of heroes, we've still got the two of heroes. Um, and essentially what happens is in these components, we always export them so they can be picked up in, oh sorry, in the components, we export them so they can be picked up elsewhere in the application. So with that, we can use the selector in the app component. And that selector is just here. We can use that in the app components HTML below title. And the app um, component is an initial component already set up by uh, when you install the Angular application. So that's already uh, configured for us with the uh, app module. Um, but now that we've used this selector, we should be able to display the component we made, which is the property hero. And that just is the, with the data windstorm. Okay, so next thing we wanna do is we wanna create an interface. So I'll actually go ahead and in the application source slash app, I'll create a folder called interfaces. And in here, I'll make a file with a capital H by convention uh, to specify that it's going to be an interface, which is essentially just a blueprint uh, for the particular type. And we can copy this in here. So this is with TypeScript. We're exporting an interface so it can be picked up elsewhere in different files, like such as a component. Uh, so each hero, we're going to have multiple heroes. So they'll have an associated ID, like one, two, three, four. And now it's of the type number. And then we'll also have a name, which is of the type string. Okay, so we've created our interface. Now, what we'd want to do is we would want to import that into the component where it's used so we can sort of refactor our uh, hero sort of here. But we'll need that interface. So let's go ahead and we'll just import that. So we can take a look at the name, which is just hero. Uh, you might want to end that in interface, but I guess hero is okay uh, and that's going to be from uh, where are we here so we're in the components so we need to go back a directory so we're in the application and then we can take a look at is that right Oh, okay, so we go back two directories. Um, so we go outside of the component and then outside of that. So we're back in the application. And then we can access the interfaces folder. And then we can access that hero uh, interface that we've created. And we can sort of refactor it into that sort of type there. So we've got the hero equals windstorm. We can delete that hero there and it had a little error because it's a duplication, but now that's removed. So the property hero is of type hero 
and we know that the interface uh, is made up of an ID and a name so that object has an ID and we'll set that to 1 and name windstorm and that's that so now to access the um, properties through string interpolation in the component we'll just add um, hero dot name so that dot is sort of like an object notation and if you're not familiar with object oriented programming um, you may need to have a look at some of the basics of like classes and objects and constructors and all that because uh, it does heavily rely on that sort of uh, concept um, but yeah so we've essentially created a particular hero um, and then that hero has a um, an ID and a name associated with it so that object can be accessed through the dot notation and with string interpolation and then we just make a h2 and you know give it div and span to give it some sort of uh, both structure and aesthetics to it so now it looks like that two of heroes uh, oh okay so the next thing is they have pipes so a pipe is can be added to the string interpolation um, such as this um, line slash uppercase and that just transforms usually string text and it's good for like um, currency or text or something like that so as you can see here we've got windstorm uh, okay that's cool so edit the hero um, okay so we want to be able to change the name of it so we need an input uh, field and to okay there's a thing called two-way binding which lets us take data from the template or the HTML or the markup and put it into the TypeScript and it also works in the other direction where we can take the variable name from the TypeScript and that can be put back into the template so we'll just go ahead and we'll just copy that label name hero dash name okay so I don't think we actually need this here it's just more to show so we'll save this and if we go back to the other uh, bash git bash uh, terminal we'll get an error and usually angular is pretty good at showing errors but not always um, so you can see in this instance that it shows the name with the uh, input with the placeholder name and that's what we have here but in the terminal we do indeed get this um, error and it shows us which file it's in and it says can't bind ng model since it isn't a known property of input and that's sort of fair enough because uh, we don't really uh, that doesn't come in by default sort of thing we have to import that ng model functionality and to do that that actually comes from the forms module so okay so the missing forms module um, let's see, can't find ng model even though it's a valid angular directive it isn't available by default and it belongs to the optional forms module that you can opt into using okay so to get the additional sort of functionality you need the other libraries or files or whatever um, and we basically we need to import the forms module and we'll do that in the app module so then they'll be uh, made globally accessible so let's just go ahead and copy that into the app module 
remember that the app module was made by default when you made the Angular and every Angular application needs that. I usually like to structure my imports so that the Angular stuff is on top and then anything I've made in the uh, as a component or something I've made in my application I have here and you know something else from an external source maybe below that uh, typically you can also structure it in alphabetical order so that may even want to be here and so when you import the module you also have to um, depending on what type uh, of thing you're importing so it could be a module or it could be a component or something like that you may have to add it into a different section so we can add the forms module into the import and we can save that pretty it fixes it up and then that goes from the gray to the blue to let us know that we have indeed done what we needed to do or we have used the file or module in this case and then we'll import the heroes component that we've created okay the file path may be a little differently uh, let's see here okay so we've already imported that into the app module but do we need to declare that as well heroes component Oh no, we must have done that previously. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just save that. And, oh, we've already saved it and it appears that the terminal uh, has compiled that successfully. So if we take a look at the two of heroes, if we look at F12 and look in the console, we don't have any errors. Oh, we got this can't bind to ng model since it is an unknown property of input. That should. So what I've done is I've just, since we've changed the app module file, sometimes you have to restart it. So I just did a control C, I think it is. And I just did another ng serve or npm start um, and with that if you, there's n that ng model error is no longer there so that wraps up the first section the hero editor section in the next video we'll continue the tour of heroes and do this display a list section